everybody, this is Dr. Maples. Today, I wanna to share with you some of my recent research on the economic impact of rock climbing and bouldering in Bishop, California. I wanna say thanks to my co-authors on this study for their support. This is a study that is forthcoming in the open source journal Capered, and that'll be out later this year. I'll be sure to link that below once it's available. In the meantime, if you'd like to see the full report, which has lots of other information in there uh, that I don't talk about today, that'll be available on my Division for Regional Economic Assessment and Modeling's website, and I'll put a link to that below. Do want to say thanks to a couple of folks. First off, I appreciate the Access Fund, the Bishop Area Climbers Coalition, and EKU for supporting this study. And on a personal level, I want to say thanks to Ben Ditto, a climbing photographer who provided the amazing images that you see, oh, well, right here on this particular slide, but also in the full report. Ben, thank you for that. I truly appreciate that. Now, for those of you who might be meeting me for the first time, I do want to point out that I recently published a book on the history of rock climbing in Kentucky's Red River Gorge. You may know the Red as a sport climbing destination, but I'll go all the way back to the 1960s when it was just getting started. We'll also learn a whole bunch of lessons, too, about being great public partners with public lands, uh, you know, leaving no trace, and understanding why closures happen and how we can prevent them. So if you're interested in this, and frankly, that whole last chapter is written for local climbing organizations who might want to learn more, check this book out. It's on Amazon, and likewise, it's available at West Virginia University Press's book website. All right, so let's get back to Bishop. we got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. First things first, I want to talk a little bit about Bishop. And it's just amazing. It's breathtaking, in fact. When I first saw some of these early pictures of Bishop, which you'll see in the report, by the way, I was just blown away. It's almost like a landscape that you don't want to accept actually exists. It seems like it should be art, but it's so beautiful. It's a high desert location. It's located in California, kind of near the Nevada line, near the Sierra Nevada. It's not too far from Death Valley, but it is. It's a high desert and just a beautiful place for bouldering, sport climbing, and more. It's an extraordinary place. If you haven't had a chance to visit it, definitely go visit. And if you can't, at least check it out online. It's just an amazing place to see. It'll truly make your day. Now, climbers do like to point out that these are the ancestral lands of the Paiute and Shoshone tribes, and they appreciate the opportunity to climb on those. This is an amazing destination that has lots of bouldering, sport climbing. For this report, we treat them all as forms of climbing, so we don't delineate too much between them in terms of their expenditures and so forth. Now, going into this particular study, the Bishop community of climbers and myself were really interested in a couple of basic questions. First off, we really wanted to understand how visitors are using the region and get a little bit more information about their use patterns in general. Things like what kinds of climbing they like to do and so forth. Second, we wanted to try to get, really for the first time, a decent estimate on how many climbers are actually visiting the Bishop area. Um, those of you who've done studies like this before know that visitation can be one of the hardest parts to estimate for economic impact studies like this. And so this one really took some time for us to think about how best to do that. Um, third, we wanted to understand their expenditure patterns because that's part of modeling out their economic impact. But finally, we also wanted to know a little bit more about who these visitors are. Do they match the same demographics that we've seen across the United States in other climbing destinations? Or there's something special here? So these are four things that we had in mind going into this, and we'll get to all these questions today. Now, first off, I do want to talk a little bit about our research methods. We used an in-person survey starting in fall 2019 and going into spring of 2020. We did a 216 surveys. Um, pretty much everyone answered all the questions, so we didn't need to exclude any. Now, we don't know how many climbers there are in Bishop. We'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, but we did treat this as a convenient sample as a result. And I will point that we focused the surveys specifically on people visiting the area from outside of Bishop. So the people that we're talking about are visitors, not necessarily climbers from within the Bishop community. Now, that survey, which I'm happy to make available if you're interested, it's actually available in the report on my website. Um, but it has a couple of basic uh, variables. We'll talk more about those as we go, but it's things like use patterns, their expenditures, and stuff like lodging, food, travel, retail, and so forth. Um, and also some common demographic questions that we use in studies of this type. Now, for the visitation pattern data, that's where we'll start. Um, we really needed to, for the first time, estimate exactly how many people are coming to this area. The good news is, is there's only so many parking lots that Bishop climbers are going to use. So what we're able to do is work with folks in California to do in-person car counts 
um, to get that information to us. We were able to use some past car count data as well as some uh, you know current car count data during our surveying. Uh, we did uh, parking lot counts and observations at the Happies, the Sads, Buttermilks, and also there's three Owens River Gorge lots that were included. Um, and what we were able to do was basically build this data set into a large Excel file that would let us model out more or less how full these parking lots were over a year. Now, it was important to really spend some time on this to detail the differences in the lots and so forth. And also, like some lots are more for route bouldering, some lots are more for sport climbing. So we needed to work out those differences based on the climate. Now, I'm happy to talk more about that in the future, and we talk about that in the uh, report in detail, but I will say using this approach, um, which we've used now in other studies, um, we've estimated that there was, you know, around 49,000 cars, and we estimated that to be around 89,000 climber visits. Now, that's per year, first off. Second, that's not necessarily 89,000 individual climbers, like people. This could be uh, a, any number of climbers coming 89,000 times. Um, so we have to keep that in mind, but the visits are how we look at the economic impact in just a moment. And so it made sense to look at it that way. Um, we do also consider too about 90% of these people are visitors. We only think about 10% were actually coming from the Bishop and surrounding Inyo County area. But that was our visitation estimate. Uh, basically lets us know there's a lot of climbers coming to Bishop every year just to be part of this amazing landscape. Now, when we start looking at those 89,000 climbers and what they like to do, we found some cool things. We found that they started climbing on average in about 2009, so they're somewhat experienced. We also found, too, that on average, they were spending about 12 days bouldering in Bishop, um, about five days sport climbing in Bishop, and then about 114 days per year climbing uh, in a gym in any place in the United States. Um, we also looked, too, about their interests across all areas. Um, about 45% engaged in trad climbing, 78% sport climbing, 86% uh, in bouldering, 25% alpine, and you can see the rest there. We will point out those obviously don't add up to 100 because you could check as many boxes as applied for that. We also wanted to find out how many nights they stay on average. And on average, folks were staying about nine days. So this was not um, sort of like a weekend warrior kind of thing where they're coming in for the weekend and going home. No, people were making this like a destination climbing spot, which is very exciting. Likewise, we too see that the group size was around 1.8. So most of the time people were climbing in pairs. There were some people coming in alone, particularly with the bouldering community. People maybe meeting up with others, but only thinking of themselves on the survey. So about 1.8 persons, which that's actually in line with what we've seen in other climbing destinations. As are these other statistics, they're pretty common. Now, when we look at their secondary activities, we wanted to find out in addition to the fact that you come here to climb, what are some of the other things that you do? And this was again, a check all option where you could choose the things that you, you engaged in uh, on a trip um, to, to the Bishop area. And so with this, we found that the big ones were really things like day hiking, uh, about 57% of people reported day hiking, which that also could be hiking to the climbing uh, crags themselves. About 11% were doing um, overnight hikes, 23% doing trail running, 14% doing some kind of backcountry skiing or snowboarding and so forth. Likewise, about 38% were doing some kind of dispersed or primitive camping, while about 24% were using paid campground scenarios. So we know a little bit more about the people that are coming into this area. Now what we need to do is think a little bit more about their expenditures. And I do want to reiterate a couple of things when we talk about this. First, remember that these are visitors to the Bishop area. Now we split up in an economic impact the visitors expenditures from people who say live in Bishop because we want to understand the differences. If you live in Bishop, you probably spend less first off. But secondly, your money is already actually involved in the Bishop and Inyo County economy. Visitors, however, people coming from, say, Nevada or, say, Tennessee or Kentucky, these are people who are bringing new dollars into the area that weren't already there. So economic impact studies are interested in visitors. And because of that, we model just visitor expenditures here. Now, we do look at their expenditures inside Inyo County, which includes Bishop. That also includes the area that they're immediately will be driving around, any locations they might stop for gas and so forth. We also, for lodging, excluded people who didn't spend any money because we want to kind of get a clearer picture of this since we have a smaller sample. To, we understand the people who um, did spend money in a category for like lodging. And then for all the other categories, we look at everyone in general. It's kind of a common approach to let us know what a typical trip looks like and if they stay overnight, it adds this to it. 
So looking at lodging, we found that, you know, hotels and cabins are actually a very big part of this. 83 bucks on average per person per visit for hotels, 71 bucks for cabins. Whereas with camping, there's lots of free opportunities available, but for folks, folks who are choosing to pay, they're paying about 20 bucks per person. Now the rest of these expenditures are anyone on a typical visit. And on this, we really found that gas honestly not surprising, was a big part of the expenditures here. Gas is expensive, as we know. It was up during the time of the survey to some degree. But also, there's a lot of drive-in to do. And so people were spending a lot of gas to get to this destination, driving around the area back and forth and so forth. So it ended up being over 50 bucks on average people were spending per person per trip in gas. Likewise, people were spending a lot on dine-in restaurants. And there's a lot of really cool dining options in Bishop, if I could just say. Uh, it was on average about 35 bucks a person. Similarly, they were picking up a lot of groceries that they were later taking back to the crag or maybe taking back to their tent site, cabin sites, whatever. Um, but that's about 35 bucks a person as well. Likewise, they were stopping at the recreation retail areas, picking up gear. So that was another 16, 17 bucks that they were spending. And again, these are people visiting the area. These are people who do not live in the area. And these are new dollars that are being brought in by the climbing community. Now, when we take that figure and start looking at expenditures, first off, we remember we had um, around 89,000, as I recall, people visiting. Um, and then we took out 10% of that as people who were local residents. So that was peeled off uh, roughly 9,000 cases. And then we can take the average expenditures, plus also adding in uh, what we know about some uh, festivals that we don't talk about in this presentation, but we do explore in the full report. It ends up pointing out to the climbers creating about $15.6 million in uh, economic impact or e economic expenditures when they're visiting the Bishop area and Inyo area. That's a lot of money that's being left behind by visitors. When we take these numbers and we run them through M-Plan, we can also understand how they impact the local sector. Now, um, M-Plan stands for Impacts for Planning. It's a common economic impact software that I use. And if you want to learn more about it, I can put a link to my Red River Gorge economic impact study where I talk in full detail about how we use M-Plan. But M-Plan allows us to model out these expenditures and understand how they do things like create taxes, create jobs, even create local wages for workers. In fact, jobs and wages are the two that we'll talk about today, but my full report has all the spectrum of things you might expect to see in an economic impact study. So when we take that $15 million, we can break it down to about $4 million in the lodging, about $11.5 million in food and gas, and a little over $100,000 in festival expenditures. We can put that into M-Plan and understand how it creates changes in the Bishop and Inyo County economy. And what it does is it creates about 127 jobs, give or take. These can be portions of jobs, so it might be a restaurant worker spending part of their job serving climbers, whereas the rest of their job is spent working with local residents. Um, but this is a really exciting thing. It's a lot of job creation that's happening. Now, largely this is happening in the tourism sector, lots of restaurant jobs and things like that that are being created, but jobs are being created nonetheless. It also creates around $5.6 million in wages. I'm sorry, $5.1 million in wages. So this is a lot of money that's being contributed into the community and adding a lot to the local economy. It's also a very exciting example of what outdoor recreation can do for lots of cities, towns, and these rural areas. Um, this is a very exciting finding for this purpose. Looking at the demographics, these are a split because about half of them fall in line with what we've seen in pretty much all the other climbing studies, but there's one that's kind of interesting. Um, about 32% of the respondents were female. That's not surprising. Average age for climbers was around 30 years, which also averages out about with a 2009 mean start climbing year uh, we talked about earlier in the study. Um, education is one thing that we have found. Climbers are always very well educated. Um, and even the ones that don't already have college degrees are often college students. We found that 54% of the people in this survey had a bachelor's degree, while another quarter of them had a graduate degree. So that's basically well over 75%, uh, three and four people in that community that are, are climbers visiting this area. They're very well educated. And when we find well-educated people, we often find high paying careers. So it's not all that surprising that 70% of respondents indicated uh, I'm sorry, one in five indicated that they had incomes uh, greater than 99,000 and 70% indicated white as part of their uh, ethnic background. Um, that was actually kind of surprising that it was 70% because generally we see a much higher percentage of white persons uh, climbing in these areas. And it's exciting to see this change here because we know that climbing is becoming more inclusive um, and we're seeing uh, lots of people from diverse backgrounds now starting to climb. So it's very exciting.
Finally, uh, we saw that 14% of respondents were business owners. So in addition to all these people that are well-educated with decent incomes coming in, who are very diverse people, um, they're now also, a lot of them are business owners. It's exciting to see these kinds of things coming to Bishop. And this is kind of one, one thing that rock climbing is bringing to that area. Now, a couple of conclusions. Um, first off, you know, the study isn't all that surprising. It actually reiterates what we've found in multiple studies now about rock climbing and uh, outdoor recreation in general. You know, these are things that bring desirable economic impacts. They bring dollars into the area through visitation that aren't already there. And it can be a really good part of a vibrant, diverse economy. I say diverse because we wanna make sure that we're not building economies around a single thing in general. We wanna make sure that we're not trying to have a climbing economy. No, this should not be the whole thing in Bishop. This should be one part of its very diverse economy. So keep that in mind when we think about these results. We're not trying to suggest that climbing should be the end all be all of the economy. Rather, it's just one important part of that community uh, and its economy. Um, second, climber expenditures, they're remaining local. What we saw in this study is that people generally kept their expenditures right in that Inyo County. We look at this a little more in the full report um, when you have time, if you want to check that out. But what we found is people were really staying local. What we suggest is making sure that the climbing community and its visitors can partner with the tourism organizations in that area and local businesses to make sure the local businesses understand exactly what climbers are looking for, make sure that the climbers know that they exist and more. There's lots of different ways to do this from advertising and climbing guides to making sure that the Bishop Area Climbers Coalition has information on their website about you know local opportunities. But make sure these things link together because we always wanna make sure if climbers can spend money local, they should do that. That's the preferred thing. We don't wanna lose those monies to urban areas in the far distant counties. Um, you know, finally, the thing that I really like about this study is that climbers in Bishop, they have higher levels of diversity. I was really excited to see that. Um, but overall, they still match that same educational dynamic that we're seeing in rock climbing studies across the United States. There's a long-standing idea that climbers aren't educated, and that's just not true. Climbers today are very well educated, and when we find great education, we find better paying jobs, which means we have more income that can be spent in areas like Bishop, California. That wraps up this study. Let me say again, if you're interested in the full report, it goes into a lot more detail uh, about things that you might be interested, ranging from our methodology to further uh, findings that we didn't even talk about today in the presentation, but I wanted to keep this one in a shorter range. So do check that out, got a link below. Likewise, if you wanna learn more about my economic impact research, you can check out my study on the Red River Gorge or my book on the Red, which talks a lot about economic impact. All right, that's everything for today. If you got videos you'd like me to make in the future, leave a comment below. Appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Y'all take care.